How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Learning RPG Maker MZ, the basics. In this episode, we're gonna look at the enemies tab and the troops tab. We're gonna go over a few different things, so let's get started. When designing your enemies, you're going to want to think about the stats in relation to the stats that the player has. So in this example, our classes have basic parameter curves that are set in the engine's default curves, like between rank A and rank E. So if you wanna see the curve, you can go into the parameter curve and click on generate curve and see where it starts at level one and where it's at at level 99 and you can change it there but we know where we're going to end up at 99 and, and we know where we start at that'll help us figure out what we should set our stats to at the beginning but if you don't know for sure i would recommend just putting all the stats really low and just gradually increasing the stats of your enemies looking at the database you have your entry points where you put in a new enemy you give it a name, you give it its parameters. If you double click on the image, you can change what the creature will look like. You can also drag a hue slider to change its uh, color. You can give it rewards, experience or gold, and assign items that it may drop. These are set to none by default, but you can have items, weapons, or armors drop, and you can set the probabilities of them to drop right here. If I did one out of one, then this potion would be a guaranteed drop. If I did one out of 10, then only 10% of the time it's gonna drop. If I did one out of 100, then only 1% of the time it's gonna drop. You can let the enemy drop multiple items as well when you're trying to figure out the numbers like i said it's in relation to the enemies but if you're trying to figure out how much experience to award how much gold to give it all depends on what you already have going on in your game i recommend starting with low numbers and increasing them as you need to play test your game a lot when you're doing this we're making our enemy we've looked at these we go down to attack patterns and we see that we've got in this menu you are given the option to select a skill and then a rating the rating is once again relative to the other skills that this character knows let's take an example and say dual attack if we gave this enemy dual attack at the rating of five then on this creature's turn the chance for it to use dual attack would be exactly the same as its chance to use attack because it has the same rating if we wanted to make the fight easier we can reduce the rate at which the dual attack will happen if we set dual attack to a rating of four and attack stays at a rating of five well relatively this is a higher rating attack is going to happen more often another thing that's important to notice let's add another skill Skill is say we add triple attack but at a rating of three now when you have a rating span of two all of these skills will still trigger but if we added another skill or if we changed one of the ratings to be further than the span of two like say double attack and we gave this a rating of two which would make a span of three from five to two then what will happen is this double attack will never ever happen because it's such a low rating it won't ever trigger if you set up your character skills like this you would have attack dual attack and triple attack trigger on its turns mostly doing attack sometimes doing dual attack and rarely doing triple attack but never double attack and that's because the rating span is too far apart if you wanted double attack to trigger you would have to either increase its rating to three or reduce the rating of attack to four so let's raise the rating of this to three now double attack will trigger at the same rate as triple attack but much less than dual attack and even further less than the basic attack but all of these will still trigger so in the instance of raising the rating on the attack to six, double attack and triple attack would never play. It's important to remember this when setting your attack pattern, your action pattern on your enemies. Moving on to the traits, We've gone over traits before, so I don't need to go through all of them individually, but I will reference some traits that you will frequently put on enemies, and that is the hit rate and evasion rate, because if you do not give them a hit rate or an evasion rate, they will not have any, and therefore they will miss every attack and also be hit by every attack. Well, mostly. Attack element is good too if it's a specific creature, especially if it's an elemental-like creature. And speaking of the elements, element rate is going to be the trait that you use the most on enemies specifically to define what it is strong against and what it is weak against etc i've gone over element rates already so we're going to move on but in case you you need a refresher if we set element rate thunder times 200 percent, that means this creature is going to take double damage from all thunder skills conversely you see water times 50 percent as an element rate trait this will make water damage be reduced in half every time so instead of a thousand they'll take 500 water damage but instead of a thousand they'll take two thousand thunder damage some other cool things that you can use for the traits is the collapse effect if you're making a special boss you might want to give it a boss collapse effect when you kill the creature it is like 
and it has a more of a disintegrating drawn out dramatic death scene so you can change the collapse effects there's a whole lot of things that you can do with inside the traits i suggest you check them out and play with them and finally we have the note box and most of the time you won't be using the note box but a lot of plugins will interact with this note box let's take the dragon bones plugin for example if you are using dragon bones animation battlers for your enemies you're going to have a lot of stuff going on in your note boxes you can set up your attack animation dragon bone settings which we can specify which battler textures we want to use the scale of the creature the width and the height and then all of its animations and which ones it's supposed to use any other relevant code to dragon bones this isn't a specific dragon bones tutorial but i wanted to talk about when you could reference the note box for the enemies you've got your creatures created and you have them all set up and you've got the stats set in here let's talk about what the stats do so your max hp is going to be how much hit points the creature has how many hits it's going to take before it dies the max mp will stop it from using some skills if it doesn't have mp and the skills required have mp for it the attack is its basic attack damage referred to as a dot atk or anytime it's referred to atk and it's it goes against the defense which will be the next stat so when you attack a creature this enemy's attack formula will be calculated against the defense stat of the opponent that's if it's a physical attack if it is a magical attack then the magic attack will be paired against the magic defense stat to determine the damage agility is an important stat to understand how it works because it plays a big role in a lot of battle systems it's often one of the most important stats it dictates the number of turns you have your chance to evade some attacks depending on what plugins you're using chance for some states to land i know luck really plays a big role in that but agility on some depending on how you set up your parameters but typically it gives you more action in combat depending on your battle system if you're using a strictly turn-based battle system with no atb type charge bars or anything then agility typically just it determines your initiative who goes first but in a lot of battle systems agility is op so keep that in mind when making your enemies you might have like 50 40 30 30 and then only 10 agility because you they'll be way too fast otherwise and then luck is your wild card stat a lot of things don't really use luck but you can design damage formulas that specifically look Look at luck you can also reframe luck to be like charisma or whatever stat you want it does determine some things by default and you can determine that it does more based on plugins you can have luck be the deciding factor and if a state lands on you if you wanted to and of course you'd still have to work around the state rates and stuff like that but luck plays some role inside dodging states and getting states inflicted on you now that you have a better understanding of all of the stats specifically let's move on to the troops you've got your enemies created but you still can't battle them unless you make a troop event to fight them so here we are on the troops tab if you click on a blank spot here on the left hand side you can give a name to the troops but you don't have to do that i recommend you use auto name it'll help you remember what you're doing but you will name it if you're making a certain event like a zoom in type of event this is going to be the group of enemies that you fight or the encounter that you have it doesn't always have to be a battle it's just the troop battle scene you've created your enemy and now you want to add your enemy to a troop you select a spot you click over here on this side and you find the enemy you created and you click add and it's going to add an enemy over inside this little box and you can change the background if you click on this and change it to whatever you want and you can issue a battle test on this troop if you want now the party is going to appear on the right hand side and you can decide where you want your enemy to appear on the left hand side or close to the party or farther away you can slide and put it wherever you want i recommend somewhere towards the back left corner it will be good and then click on auto name and it will put a name of the creature say you added a bunch of creatures you can add up to eight creatures in a combat it will just put a little multiplication so in this this is three water hags you can even add multiple things in auto name it'll say three water hags and a crow you can also clear everything auto name will clear it if it has nothing in it once you do have an enemy added and you've created a troop we're going to look at the next thing the battle event this is sort of like a parallel thing that happens but when it happens is based on the span so we're going to look at this first the span is going to determine like the win when does this happen if you have your span set to battle it'll tell you right here it's only going to run once in that battle it runs when the battle starts or whenever the conditions are met but it runs once in the battle and then if you set it to turn it'll run this event every turn 
once per turn it's going to run this event but you can be more specific if you want it to be like completely like a parallel and you can set the span to moment and when you set it to moment it's going to run as a parallel and then the moment that the conditions have been met it's going to execute that code well right now we haven't set any conditions so it's up to when you want it to happen for the span and conditions but let's just say we want this to happen when the enemy's hp is below 50 percent now the very moment that enemy won because you can have up to eight enemies so you can see these question marks are representing what types of enemies are in here we have only one so the water hag is the one we're selecting so when this enemy number one the water hag hp is below 50 percent then this event will trigger what what do we want to happen well we can have it do anything we can show text and say and then that's all that will happen let's actually battle test this and see if it works right the moment his hp was under halfway we get the text pop up you are halfway there thing is we didn't turn off the event and it's set as a parallel now we are permanently halfway there <laughs> in order to avoid that you have to treat this event event like you would treat every other event. So let's set the span from moment to turn. That'll cause it to only happen once per turn. And we change the message to say, you're over halfway there. So if the creature is under half health uh, on his turn, it, sh it should, at the end of his turn, it should say you're over halfway there. But we're going to set the span to battle. That way it only happens once per battle. And when it gives us the message, we set the conditions to be when the water hag is under half health. It'll tell us that we're over halfway there and it'll only happen once per the battle. You're over halfway there. And then he goes, boom, boom. And then we should kill him and he shouldn't say it again. And that's how it goes. And that's a quick demonstration of a troop event, a battle event. That's basically it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys liked it, you found it informative. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're not already. Come join us on the Discord. We have a Patreon. Special shout out to Dejika for sponsoring this video. Thank you so much everybody for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.